Good morning, everyone. This is the first session of Second All India Online Physiology Festival 2022. I am Dr. Kari Yang, Senior Resident in the Department of Physiology at Lady Harding Medical College, New Delhi. On behalf of our department, I welcome you all to this online festival. Today, we have model making competition in the morning session and comic strip making competition in the afternoon session. So I would like to start by requesting Dr. Sunita Mondol, Director, Professor and Head of our department to welcome everyone. Ma'am, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kari. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, respected director, sir, Dr. Virendra Kumar, our respected uh, vice principal, ma'am, Dr. Ravinder Kaur, Dr. K.K. Deepak, Dr. Neelam Wani, and all others who have joined us on this online platform. I extend a very warm welcome on this very special occasion of the second All India Online Physiology Festival 2020. I, on behalf of the whole department, <laughs> I am Dr. Sunita Mandal, and I have the great pleasure in welcoming all student faculty of various medical colleges from all over the uh, country. We are very proud that this is a second time that we are celebrating the festival of the <laughs> All India at the All India level. The idea of Physiology Festival was pitched in by one of our faculty members, none other than Dr. Madhulika Munga, professor in the department last year. And the main objective of this festival was to make the concepts of physiology a fun to learn and to also bring about various innovative and creative methods into the learning of physiology. Last year, we had our first physiology festival in an online mode in the All India level. We were overwhelmed by the responses from the different medical colleges and thus encouraged by, our, uh, by the response obtained last year. This year too, we are heading into an exuberant journey for the next two days. We will be having two sessions in each day with different categories, starting at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. respectively. And now I welcome you all to be part of this fun-filled educational journey. I welcome our patron director, Sir Dr. Virendra Kumar. I welcome ma'am, Dr. Deepak, Dr. Uh, who's head of the Department of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. I welcome you, sir. Dr. Neelam Wani, the head of Department of Physiology at University College of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. I welcome you, ma'am. And now I request our director, sir, Dr. Virendra Kumarji, to please welcome and bless us. Thank you. Sir, please. Very good morning to all and uh, on behalf of Lady Harding Medical College, I take this opportunity uh, to welcome you all, uh, all the dignitaries who are on the line uh, in this era of virtual meeting. Um, I really um, enjoy these meetings because, uh, you know, you can uh, be a part uh, without being there in physical form. So that's really nice and I take this opportunity, Dr. Vani, Dr. Deepak, all dear faculty members from our institute and the other uh, dignitaries uh, who have joined from other institute, dear students and faculty members from other institute. So it's really an uh, honor for me to be on this platform among you. Uh, I'm a pediatrician by profession and I understand the importance of physics and physiology which is the theme uh, for this year. Uh, unfortunately, last year it could not be uh, managed because of the COVID going on. But uh, we hope that we will continue this chain of uh, having uh, the uh, these uh, meetings, uh, maybe in the virtual form or uh, the physical form as the time suggests to us. 
and uh, the theme which has been uh, uh, chosen for this year is really a great value for the student it provides a platform for understanding the physics and the value of uh, physiology in medical field and uh, we always teach our student that without knowing the physiological concept you cannot understand the disease uh, pathophysiology and if you are not clear of disease pathophysiology you just cannot manage and there are going to be many errors and uh, so many times you get confused uh, many a times i have seen in emergency i spent my uh, 28 years in emergency and icu and many a time child comes with pain abdomen and uh, dehydration and uh, the students in the beginning they think uh, this is a gi problem but if they do not understand the physiology that the dehydration can also occur because of diabetic ketoacidosis and they tend to get confused and uh, so uh, here comes the role of teachers to guide them to take uh, their hand into their hand and uh, take them through the uh, all process of management so on making uh, the basic understanding clear to the student is the first step in management wherever we are so it's a great initiative and i congratulate department of physiology for taking this lead and uh, be the uh, proud organizer uh, and i'm also one of uh, them so i also really really feel proud of it and uh, my best wishes to all of you and i hope uh, at the end of the day there will be a great learning and uh, i can see so many senior teachers are sitting here uh they can make you understand without giving any tension in, in your uh, thinking process so wish you all the very best and good luck and happy learning thank you very much thank you ma'am and thank you sir for encouraging us and for highlighting the importance of physiology now i request our vice principal ma'am dr ravinder kaur to say a few words um <clears throat> yes hello hello good morning uh, it's nice to be on this forum i have been invited by dr mandel and her team i'll thank them for inviting me uh, it's a lovely in fact it's a very out of the block kind of uh, conference which is going on not many people would have thought about it but earlier also they held a conference we held a conference two years back and it was very successful and i really congratulate dr mandel and her team for holding this again and on a very important topic where we are correlating physics with physiology science without science uh, you know it's difficult for anything to any um, biological happening to occur and for children to realize it and yet enjoy it in this for in this forum in this manner is what is interesting and would be nice i wish you all luck and i am sure it will go as a great success thank you so much thank you ma'am for your kind words now i would like to call upon the organizing secretaries to share more details about today's event good morning all first of all i dr anita pawar professor department of physiology at lhmc and I, Dr. Madhulika Monga, Professor, Department of Physiology, Lady Harding Medical College. We take this opportunity to thank one and all for supporting and being the part of Physiology Festival. We had envisioned the Physiology Festival during the challenging times of COVID, when our students were not with us on campus, and we were missing out the joy of teaching and learning with our students. Our first All India Online Physiology Festival got an overwhelming support from both students and faculty across the country. The festival strengthened the belief that learning is a celebration, and each celebration is a learning. We are truly grateful to our seniors, fellow physiologists, and students for this. So, all of us gather once again to celebrate learning physiology. This year' theme for the festival is physics and physiology. Anyone who has read physiology understands how intricately physics is involved in each and every process of our body. Be it a heartbeat, breathing. muscle contraction or our brain function and the list goes on thus understanding physics and physiology goes hand in hand and what can explain concepts better than working models 
we thus begin our festival with our first category of model making competition we are eagerly looking forward to see the models prepared by our participants it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our esteemed judges of the day it is our privilege to have with us dr kk deepak head of department of physiology aims new delhi it is impossible to enumerate sir's achievements over the years and his contribution in the fields of physiology healthcare research and medical education in a few words nevertheless i will try to do my best an md and phd in physiology from aims new delhi sir has been serving as faculty in the department of physiology since 1987 A pioneer in the field of autonomic physiology, Sir set up the Autonomic Function Lab in the Department of Physiology, pioneered the development of heart rate variability, and also set up another lab for evaluating human vascular functions. Along with his team, Sir was instrumental in the development of indigenous software for quantification of autonomic tone by HRV and vascular tone by. blood pressure variability and a cloud based program for centralized hrv system for and he spread it throughout the country more than 120 theses have been carried out in autonomic physiology under sir's able guidance so very firmly believes in collaboration and working as a team and has set examples through his own efforts and successful collaboration with renowned international and indian institutes like ucsd san diego iit delhi iit roorkee nit jalandhar baba atomic research center mumbai iitm gwalior iit madras to name a few with such collaborations sir has been able to bring about many innovations in medical research to mention a few he devised blood pressure simulation model techniques of emg biofeedback for patients of heart and dystonia electrogastrography for irritable bowel syndrome the blood pressure simulation model also won him recognition and devraj bajaj award which was later used in nasa experiments he is a co-inventor in other innovations like cuffless bp device isometric exercise human muscular fatigue recording system and devices for space physiology he has worked on brain stimulation by using bhagik stimulation and yogic breathing so has also innovated a special body gear to facilitate yoga during space travel for which a patent was filed in 2018 and has won him recognition and award of dsc degree from swayasa university bangalore So has been recognized by government of India for his exemplary contribution in the field of yoga and meditation an active member of satyam dst government of india since 2015 so also chaired the committee which developed various physical activity protocols and guidelines under fit india program of government of india 2020 He has significantly contributed in the field of medical education and published several studies. Sir has delivered several invited talks in various countries, including UIC Peoria, Harvard Medical School, and UCSD San Diego. Sir has also significantly contributed in faculty development programs in SARC nations, accredited with many publications with nearly four hundred four thousand citations. with an h index of 33 so is truly a luminary in the field of physiology i welcome you sir thank and you. it is our pleasure to have you with us today thank you so thank much you so much for joining thank us you. next i take the privilege of welcoming dr neelam wali uh, neelam wani ma'am dr neelam wani is a director professor and head of department of physiology ucms and gtb hospital new delhi ma'am completed her mbbs from rnt medical college udaipur and md physiology from sms medical college jaipur dr wani is also a dean of ayurveda unani sciences and homeopathy sciences in delhi university She has been appointed as observer for University of Mauritius. 
Ma'am is editor of Indian Journal of Physiology and Pharmacology, and she is on advisory board of Indian Journal of Medical Specialities. She has done many assignments for several prestigious educational bodies like MCI, National Board of uh, Education, ICMR, AIMS, Aligarh Muslim University, PGIMS, RUHS, etc., to name just a few of them. Dr. Vani's field of specialization is neurophysiology. She has many publications to her credit at national and international journals. Ma'am has co-authored books titled Physiology for Laboratory Technicians in Hindi and Impact of Mobile Phone on Health. She is contributor of chapter Electrodiagnosis in Turek's book of Orthopedics, Jaipur. Ma'am has always been very encouraging and supportive of all our endeavors. One of Ma'am's greatest strengths is her ability to take everyone together and move forward. We have experienced Ma'am's compassion innumerable times. We feel privileged to have you with us, Ma'am, today. Thank you so much that in spite of being so busy, you have taken out time for us. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now let me share a few details about today's competition. The participants have submitted their respective entries in the form of a video, which would be played one after other. The time limit for each video is five to six minutes. We have three prizes for the model making category, first, second, third, which would be decided by our judges of the day. The judges and the organizers reserve the right to disqualify the team if plagiarism is found or if use of unparliamentary language is observed at any stage of the competition. The decision of the judges would be final and binding. We also have an audience choice award. The link for the same has been shared in the description box of our YouTube live streaming link. The voting would start as soon as the first video would have been played and it would be closed within 30 minutes of the end of the screening of the last entry. The announcement of the winners of all the categories would be announced together on the last session of the festival that is on 22nd September afternoon session. I welcome all of you once more and with the permission of our judges, without any further delay, I request Dr. Himanshi, Senior Resident and Coordinator for the Model Making category to start with the competition. Over to you, Dr. Himanshi. Uh, can we request everyone to go mute so that our videos are played without any noise? Thank you. I, Dr. Okay. Imanshi, Senior Resident in the Department of Physiology, Lady Harding Medical College, New Delhi, welcome you all to the very first event of second All India Physiology Festival, which is model making. So we have participants from all over India from various medical and dental colleges. So the first team we have is from Armed Forces Medical College, Pune, which is named as Physiology AFMC. Hello everyone, now we are going to depict the model of the perfusion of the lungs, the distribution of the pulmonary blood flow. Now the model is mainly made up of three materials. Now here let's move on. The bottle which is made up of a disposable water bottle indicating the heart. And the tubes which are made up of a used police catheter which are indicating the pulmonary trunk and its branches. And the three cups placed are indicating the different zones of the lung. And the cup that is placed at the lowermost is indicating the base of the lung. And the cup that is placed at the topmost is indicating the apex of the lung. Now we, will, we are going to depict this model. The medical cardiac Jitesh Sharma will now depict the model. Now I will show how it works. of this model we are able to understand that whenever the heart is pumping the blood there is more flow of blood into the base region of the lung comparatively to the other regions. Now we are demonstrating this in an upright individual. Now let's move on to the factors that are causing this differential blood flow. The main effect is by the gravity. The effect of the gravity is attributed to the hydrostatic pressure difference between the top and bottom of the lungs. Now when there is an increase in the height of the area of the lung from the heart, there will be decrease in the hydrostatic arterial pressure. 
Now, whenever there is an increase in one centimeter of height, there will be decrease in zero point seven four mm of Hg. And always, a pressure difference of twenty three mm of Hg is constantly maintained between the top and base of the lungs. Uh, now, for the perfusion to occur, the arterial pressure should be greater than that of the alveolar pressure. According to the principle, at the apex, the alveolar pressure is greater than the arterial pressure. At the middle, the arterial pressure is greater than alveolar pressure. But coming to the base, the arterial pressure is comparatively and relatively more greater than the alveolar pressure. According to the principle, and uh, that perfusion will occur only if the arterial pressure is greater. Then, according to that, the base will be having the more perfusion. When a person is standing at rest. The blood flow to the top of the lung will be less, and when we compare same with the base, it will be five times greater. Thank you. So that was a nice effort. Next, we have a presentation from Simran Preet Kaur from Lady Harding Medical College. You never know how much you value your breath until you can't breathe. Hello everyone. My name is Simran Preet Kaur from Lady Harding Medical College. Now let's briefly talk about our respiratory tract. It is divided into three interconnected regions, starting from upper airway, conducting airway, and the alveolar airway. The upper airway starts from our nose or nasal cavity, leading up to pharynx, then to larynx. The conducting airway starts from our trachea, leading to terminal bronchioles. And then the alveolar airway starts from respiratory bronchioles to alveolar sacs. The particulate size of 30 to 50 micrometer does not enter our upper airway. Now the particulate size of 5 to 10 micrometer impacts on our nasopharyngeal wall, and the particulate size of 2 to 5 micrometers enters our bronchioles, leading to bronchial reflux, bronchoconstriction, and coughing. And now I present you lung failure. Now this machine blocks the particle size of less than 0.5 micrometers. It works on a very simple principle. That is, the air is sucked in from this inlet, and after being purified, it is put out from this outlet. Now, how is the air being purified? Now this filter, as you can see, contains very very tiny pores in which the particle size of less than 0.5 micrometers is entrapped. After switching on the fan, a negative pressure is created in this chamber, and the air is sucked in. And the particles get entrapped in the filter, and after getting purified, the air is thrown out of this chamber. So now let's talk about the raw materials used. Besides the bike filter, everything here is reused. This fan is an old CPU fan. This is a plastic box, and the base, as you can see, is made up of newspapers so that the filter remains in close contact with the fan. So this machine is a boon for every Indian family. India is one of the most polluted countries, ranking three worldwide. So this machine can prevent us from various respiratory disorders. Now let's see how it works. As we cannot show it with micro particles, we will show it with bits of paper. Now it is this is connected to a adapter. Now I'll switch it on. Now as you can see, the papers are getting entrapped. Now, as you can see, the air is coming out. for a nice presentation next we have a presentation from aims rajkot their team named brainiacs hello we team brainiacs we present in aims rajkot and today we going to present our model this is depicting the movements of the eye So the topic was physics and physiology 
and adhering to it, we have chosen to depict the agonistic and antagonistic effects of the muscles facilitating the movement of the eye. Basically, for facilitating almost any movement, we need an agonist muscle also known as the prime mover and an antagonist muscle. The agonist contracts and causes the movement while the antagonist relaxes and stretches to allow the movement. Let's understand this with the help of the model. So the human eye has muscles known as medial rectus and lateral rectus which are responsible for causing side to side movement of the eyeball. For causing medial movement, the muscle medial rectus has to contract. It acts as the prime mover and the muscle lateral rectus attached oppositely acts as antagonist and allows the movement by relaxing itself. Similarly, for lateral movement, the lateral rectus acts as the prime mover while the medial rectus acts as the antagonist. For superior movement, the superior rectus acts as the prime mover while the inferior rectus acts as the antagonist. And for the inferior movement, the inferior rectus acts as the prime mover and the superior rectus acts as the antagonist. Such movements use concepts of physics such as torque, where the force applied by the muscle acts from a distance from the axis. The greater the distance, the greater is the torque. The physiological concept of muscle tone finds its roots in physical concepts such as tension along a fiber. The normal tone of the muscle helps to keep the eye in the normal position. This tone is due to the tension of the muscle fibers. We've depicted this tension in our model using threads that are taut when eye is in the normal position. Working of the model. We've used the concept of hydraulics to facilitate the movements of the muscles. Two syringes are connected via a tube and water is used as the hydraulic fluid. One syringe acts as the muscle analog and the other acts as a controller. When the plunger of the controller is pressed, the plunger of the muscle analog is pushed forwards. This plunger has been connected to thread which ultimately attaches at the insertion of a rectus muscle. Taking medial movement as an example, the working of this model can be explained. As already discussed, the medial rectus will act as the agonist and the lateral rectus as the antagonist. To generate the movement, the plunger of the medial rectus is pulled back, representing contraction of the muscle, and the plunger of the lateral rectus is pushed forward, representing the relaxation of the antagonist. This ultimately results into the medial movement. Similarly, all the movements may be superior, inferior or lateral are generated. It is worthwhile to notice how the thread of the antagonist loosens depicting relaxation and the agonist tightens representing contraction. The making of this model has been both a challenge and a delightful experience. Thank you for watching. So that was an informative presentation. Next we have a presentation by Anirudh Dahuja from University Institute of Medical Sciences, Prayagraj. Hello everyone, my name is Anirudh Dhuja, first year MBBS student at United Institute of Medical Sciences, Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh. Today, I am going to present my model on knee jerk reflex. It is also known as patella reflex. It is the example of simplest arc that helps us to maintain body balance and posture. It is an example of monosynaptic reflex arc as it forms single synaptic connections at the level of spinal cord between sensory neurons and motor neurons. When the doctor strikes the patellar tendon below the kneecap, it causes automatically your leg to kick outwards. If this doesn't happen or happens extensively, it is an indicative of some disorder or injury to spinal cord. This whole process occurs without the involvement of brain. The brain receives information only after the movement is initiated. So, when the patellar tendon is striked, this causes the stretching of quadriceps muscles. This stretching is picked up by the muscle spindle present in these quadriceps muscles. This stimulates the type 1A sensory neurons that carry the sensory impulse to the spinal cord where they synapse with motor neurons and interneurons. The motor neurons are typically alpha motor neurons. This alpha motor neurons when excited 
causes the contraction of quadriceps muscles the connections made at the spinal cord level between the interneurons and the inhibitory fibers causes the antagonist muscles to relax the sensory motor neurons synapse with the interneurons that inhibit the activity of the motor nerves that supply the opposing muscles in this case we have hamstrings so the contraction of hamstrings muscles is opposed by the inhibitory action of the interneurons so the stimulation of these inhibitory interneurons causes the quadriceps muscles to be unopposed So that was a nice presentation. Next we have a presentation from Ains Kohati named Titus Androgicus. We are surrounded by various kinds of sound. Some irritable, some pleasant. Some that catch our attraction and some are so meaningless that we ignore them completely. Have you ever wondered how near vibration in air gets converted to into impulse? And then how they are interpreted by our brain? Let's find out. We, the student of Ms. Guwahati, are here to present the working model of this year. So I would like to call Prince to explain this working model. Now I am going to introduce the parts of our model. Now this is our ear pinna and here auditory canal. In the middle ear we have malleus incus steps three bones. From wall of the middle ear. One tube, stachian tube, connects the middle ear to the nasopharynx. Here, the uncoiled cochlea, in which the bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth are present. Here, the tectorial membrane, and below this, this is the basilar membrane, on which the hair cells are sewn. This is the vestibular cochlear nerve, which carries the sensory information from the cochlea to the our brain, temporal lobe, auditory cortex. Now. Through this model, we are going to reveal the actual mechanism of the generation of impulse. In this model, the sound wave enters our ear through this external auditory matrix and this, uh, traveling through this canal, it exerts pressure on the tympanic membrane at the end of external auditory matrix and this pressure is transferred to the cochlea via this ear ossicles, malleus incus steps and this wave enters the cochlea through oval window. This is the bony labyrinth and this is the part of membranous labyrinth which is opened to show the tectorial membrane and below which the organ of corti is located on the basilar membrane. And this is the area of the membranous labyrinth. The ripples generated in the fluid inside this bony labyrinth cause the pressing of hair cells against the tectorial membrane. Due to this, the membrane potential of hair cells change and the impulse generated here is carried to the auditory area of the brain through this vestibular cochlear nerve and this is how the brain analyzes the sound that we hear now let's see how this model works i'm going to give external stimulus by pressing this piston so let's focus on how the hair cells get pressed against the tectorial membrane and completes the circuit Long as the stimulus persists, the brain perceives the sound. As long as the stimulus persists, the brain perceives the sound. Thank, Thank you. you. So next we have a presentation by Manav Rachna Dental College, their team named Emerald. Morning everyone, we are here to present FDS Manav Rachna Dental College, MRIIS Faridabad, Haryana. We are going to demonstrate conduction of nerve impulse in a neuron through waste material available in and around us. Use now my spa, use device lights, use surgical gloves, use bottle,
dendrites, cell body, nissel granules, nucleus with nucleolus, mitochondria, neurofibrillae, Schwann cells, exon, node of Renvier, synaptic nerve. None of our perceptions, thoughts, or memories would be possible without nerve conduction. The process by which nerve impulses are propagated along neurons is through saltatory conduction. Nerve conduction is an electrochemical process which means that it uses electricity made with chemical molecules. Conduction of nerve impulse occurs due to presence of active and electronic potential along the conductors. Neurons conduct electrical impulse by using action potential phenomena that is generated through flow of positively charged ion across the neuronal membrane. Physiology, general review of physiology, and the last couple textbook of physiology. Our team name is Emeralds, and our members are Aisha Zee, Team Leader, Anjali Khadana, Kirti Joshi, Punya Vrita Badamba, Francine Zena. We have a presentation again by Manav Rachna Dental College team Abound. A warm hello to everyone from team Abound. I am Drishti Samal. Physics and biology are studied by all science students, but we are here to bring forth a very interesting concept of physics in physiology. I will explain here the extensive phenomena of our body that is blood flow and the physics behind it. An important measurement of how the blood flows through our vessels is dependent on a major factor that is vascular resistance. Let's take a look at the factors which influences this factor. The first factor being viscosity. Internal resistance existing in the blood is due to attraction of the molecules within it. The second factor being length of our blood vessel and third is the diameter of our blood vessel. The next important concept that is the blood volume flow rate. This in fluid dynamics is given by Poissier's equation. This Poissier's equation is applicable for incompressible fluids and the fluids which have a laminar flow. Why is this equation so important? Let's look at the equation. The blood volume flow rate is directly proportional to the fourth power of the radius. So even any tiny changes in the radius has a drastic effect on the volume. So now let's take a look at how this Poissier's equation is applicable in our body. Let's consider that this is a suction pipe of 30 cm length. So this could be the length of our blood vessel. This is, let's suppose this is the pumping organ or the organ which creates the pressure and we, and this is the blood. So if we create pressure in the tube, the blood flows through it and it reaches to an area of low pressure. So the blood flows from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. So now let's take a look at how this Poissier's equation is important in physiology. The extensive network of blood vessels which is supplying our body exerts pressure on this muscular wall which is known as blood pressure. The blood pressure is highest during systole that is contraction of the heart and it is least during the diastole that is when the heart is at rest works to create a pressure so that the blood through the aorta flows into the body and then returns back through the vena cava into the heart. The blood contracts that is systole and the blood flows due to the pressure created. So this is how 
two dynamic concepts physics and physiology could be brought together thus i would like to conclude thank you it was a good presentation next we have a presentation by team hydraulics from aims rajkot Welcome to a demonstrative and explanatory video on a working model of renal hemodynamics based on Hage Poiseuille law. It is presented to you by Team Hydraulics from AIMS Rajkot, Gujarat. This is a model apparatus showing a shower head in the center of this image representing glomerular apparatus. The tube to the right represents afferent arteriole and the tube on the left represents the efferent arteriole. The beaker below The glomerular apparatus fills with glomerular filtrate and the one draining out efferent arteriole fills with efferent arteriolar outflow. Using this apparatus, we'll demonstrate three scenarios starting with normal unconstricted arteriolar outflow with the shown setting. After that, for demonstrating flow with efferent arteriole constricted, the vessel depicting the same would be clamped with a black paper clip. The clamped vessel simulates a vessel the smaller diameter. For the next scenario, similar setting would be used for efferent arteriole. Now we'll watch some demonstrative clips for each of these scenarios. Normal flow. Efferent arteriolar constriction. efferent arteriolar constriction moving on to the observational analysis of the results obtained The change in results are due to efferent arteriolar constriction which reduces both the GFR and the efferent arteriolar flow. This results from efferent arteriolar constriction which reduces the flow in efferent arteriole so we get reduced efferent arteriolar flow but GFR gets increased which increases the amount of glomerular filtrate collected the concept demonstrated here is hage poise law its simple reinterpretation shows us that vascular resistance is inversely proportional to fourth power of diameter of that vessel this explains why constriction in a vessel reduces the flow ahead of it and increases the flow preceding it in the end i'd like to acknowledge the team effort and thank you for watching thank you aims rajkot next we have a presentation by sarojini naidu medical college agra by vedehi gupta i pay my warmest regards to all and thank my parents and teachers who inspired me I Vedi Gupta am a first year student of MBBS at Sarojini Naidu Medical College Agra batch 2021 To start with here's my simple model themed physics in physiology Here this broad group symbolizes artery while the narrower ones are arterioles and venules the finest one are the capillaries this one which is a little wider than a designated artery is ought to be vein The valves are present to prevent any backflow of blood especially during muscle contraction. According to Poiseuille's Hagen law, blood flow is directly proportional to the pressure difference, radius of the vessels to the power of 4 and inversely to the length of the vessel and viscosity of the blood. Here, the pressure change is created by change in potential energy using height difference thanks to Bernoulli's theorem. As one as ventricular systole occurs, blood is drawn into aorta to arteries to capillaries veins superior and inferior vena cava and eventually to the right atrium the direction is maintained mainly by the pressure gradient from higher pressure to lower pressure from artery to vein but this flow also faces opposition by the endothelial lining in the walls of vessels resistance can also be physiological in nature for example vasoconstriction or increase in density of the blood 
These changes lead to different types of flow, the silent or laminar flow and the noisy or turbulent flow. So what determines it? Reynolds number. If Reynolds number is lesser than 2000, it is laminar flow, while greater than 3000 means turbulence. In between, it's kind of transitional flow. Here, I would like to point out that Reynolds number depends on velocity, density of the fluid, diameter of vessels, and inversely proportional to the viscosity of fluid. Like in case of pregnancy, in anemia, where blood, RBC blood count decreases, thereby decreasing viscosity and increasing Reynolds number, this leads to turbulent flow and flow murmur can be heard. Same is illustrated here. In BP measurement, the bladder of a sphygmomanometer constricts the brachial artery, thus decreases the radius. Turbulence produced afterwards produces noises or Kuretkov sounds. Here in the third model, arthrosclerosis is shown, leading to abdominal aortic aneurysm. Arthrosclerosis is an important risk factor for abdominal aortic aneurysm. According to Laplace law, tension is directly proportioned to pressure and radius. Due to increase in pressure, tension increases enlarging aorta. This is deadly if abdominal aorta ruptures. So this was all about my model. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the presentation. Next we have a presentation by Indra Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute, Pondicherry by Shravani titled The Binding Antibody. I am presenting here a model of testicular physiology and physics. The testis is in the scrotum and is covered by two layers of fibrous tissue called tunica vaginalis visceralis depicted in red and tunica vaginalis parietalis depicted in yellow. Uh, the visceralis layer is the secretory layer and the parietal layer is the absorptive layer. Usually the fluid secreted is entirely absorbed. Thus, there will not be any accumulation of fluid between the layers of tunica vaginalis. You must be thinking why I am describing this here, because here lies the physics. The secretion and absorption are based on the secretory and absorptive surface areas of the tunica vaginalis. Also, the rate of secretion and absorption plays a role. The change in surface area and rate of secretion and absorption of fluid occurs in various pathological conditions. Whenever there is an increase in secretion or decrease in absorption, it leads to accumulation of fluid within the vaginalis sac. This abnormal collection of fluid within the sac is called a hydrocele. Two clinical tests are used to diagnose the hydrocele. First, the fluctuation test. This test is based on Pascal's law of fluid mechanics, which states that in a fluid at rest inside a closed container, a pressure change in one part is transmitted without loss to every portion of the liquid and to the walls of the container. A pressure is applied at one pole of the scrotal swelling with, a, with one finger or more and the transmitted pressure is perceived with other fingers placed at the other pole of the scrotal swelling. A positive test is a diagnostic of hydrocele. The second test is the transillumination test. This test is based on physics principle of transmission of light. The light passes through the transparent and translucent objects and not through opaque objects. Transillumination of scrotum is a very simple diagnostic test to check for hydrocele. Applying a light source to the most significant part of the scrotum, the scrotal swelling is illuminated due to the clear fluid inside suggestive of hydrocele. Not only this, but physics and physiology play a significant role in the management of hydrocele. The definitive treatment of hydrocele is surgery and the principles of surgery are based on physics and physiology. The surgical treatment of hydrocele is to expose the transvaginalis visceralis layer directly to the scrotal wall and its lymphatics by excision, plication or by aversion of the transvaginalis parietalis layer. Thus, there will be an increase in the surface area for absorption of hydrocele fluid. To summarize, the principles of physics and physiology play a vital role in the etiology, pathogenesis, clinical diagnosis and the treatment of hydrocele. This model uses materials like clay, adhesive, balloon, colors, used syringes and IV sets. We propose to use this model for teaching medical students and counseling patients. Thank you. Thank you. So we are almost approaching the end of our model making session. Next we have a presentation by Ames Gohati by team Solo Tesla. Judges and all the viewers, a very good day to one and all. 
I am B. M. Nikhil, a first year MBA student from Ames Guwahati. I have made a working model on visual pathway from retina to visual cortex with the, using the principles of physics. In this model, I have used the principles of physics involved in the electrical circuits to describe the conduction of impulses in the visual pathway and the effects of circuit breaks, which can represent the effects of lesions in the pathway. First, I would like to describe the components of my model. This is the eyeball and the innermost layer of the eyeball is the retina and I have used the light dependent resistors which is commonly called as LDR to represent the receptors. Next we have the optic nerve. I have used the different colored LEDs to depict the information carrying from the nasal half of a retina and temporal half of retina. Here there is an optic chiasma where the nasal retinal fibers cross over and here there is the optic tract where the fibers relate to the lateral genitalate body and then go to the visual cortex. This is the basic circuit of the retina which I have used in the model. Here I have used an LDR which represents the photoreceptor, events occurring in the human eye. Light falls on the photoreceptor which causes the hyperpolarization and decrease in release of glutamate and neurotransmitter which results in conduction of impulses through the visual pathway. Events occurring in the retina of the model. Light falls on the LDR. This leads to decrease in resistance of the LDR which decreases the resistance which can be similar to that of braided potentials in the photoreceptors. This increase in flow of current leads to activation of LEDs. This is a transistor which I used. When transistor gets the current, it modulates the current in the circuit, which is a similar function where amacrine and horizontal cells modulate the signals by lateral inhibition. Let me show you. Light from the nasal field of vision activates the LDR green one. Light from the temporal field of vision activates blue LED. Light from the temporal field of vision of the other eye activates red LED. Light from the nasal field of other eye activates white LED. When I shine a beam of light from the temporal half of visual field onto the LDR present in the nasal half of retina, the red LED, there is a transmission of uh, impulses which can be depicted by the red LEDs along the visual pathway. Also in this model, the circuit can be broken at different levels to depict the lesions at different levels in the visual pathway. Effect of lesion at optic nerve can be depicted by switching off the circuit at the optic nerve so that the circuit breaks and no flow of current through these fibers takes place. So there is a complete loss of uh, information from the affected eye and this leads to condition called as anopia. There is no transmission of signal even if I am facing the light from both the nasal field and the temporal field of vision. And this doesn't affect the opposite eye and white LEDs. When there is a lesion at optic chiasm, there is an interruption of information traveling from nasal half of retinas of both the eyes which cross at the optic chiasm and they carry the information from the temporal field of vision of both the eyes. And when there is an interruption in this area, this leads to loss of temporal field of vision of both the eyes. And this condition is called as bitemporal hemianopia. In bitemporal hemianopia, the nasal field vision is paired. As you can see, the fibers from the temporal part of retina, uh, which is not caused in the optic chiasm, works well. In the same fashion, in the opposite eye, the a white LED is blinking, which doesn't cross at the optic chiasm. When there is a lesion of optic tract, so no current passes through the temporal fibers of retina of the same eye and nasal fibers which are crossed at optic chiasm of the opposite eye. But in the same eye, the temporal field of vision is transmitted and in the opposite eye, nasal field of vision is also transmitted. And this is called as homonymous hemianopia. With this, I conclude my presentation with a small take home message. Use your eyes even after your death by donating your eyes. Thank you. It was a good presentation. Next, we have a presentation by Bhaskar Mishra from Vardhaman Mahavid Medical College, New Delhi.
भास्कर मिश्रा एंड आई एम फ्रॉम टीम अनुसंधान रिप्रेजेंटिंग वर्धमान महावीर मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड सफदरजंग हॉस्पिटल सो टूडे हियर आई एम विद माई मॉडल माई मैकेनिकल मॉडल डिपेक्टिंग द इलेक्ट्रिकल कार्डिया कंडक्शन पाथवे राइट सो वॉट आई ऑब्जर्व फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉज द रेशियो ऑफ कार्डिया कंडक्शन वेलॉसिटीज इन द डिफरेंट पार्ट इंटरनोटल पाथवे बंडल ऑफिस एंड पर्केजर फाइबर्स एंड दैट अपियर टू बी टू इज टू थ्री इज टू फाइव नो माई ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज टू Embed this ratio in my mechanical model, or somehow depict this ratio in my mechanical model. What I did for that purpose is I took three types of circular cutouts: one with a quite small radius, one with a medium radius, and one with a large radius. Right. So one with the small radius uh, was uh, representing internodal pathway between S A node and A V node. The one with the medium radius was representing bundle of his, and the one with the large radius was representing Purkinje fibers. Right. Now. I have to bring these conduction velocity ratio to these impulses, these small projections which were present on my circular cutouts. These represent impulses. I want them to travel in this ratio, in this velocity ratio. How I achieved that? I provided each of the circular cutouts a same angular velocity omega, right? So the linear conduction velocity here for any particle or the impulse lying on the circumference of the circular cutout will be angular velocity times the radius of the circular cutout, right? So for the first case, I have v1 is equals to omega r1, v2 is equals to omega r2. For the second case, and v3 is equals to omega r3. For the third case, now when I take the ratio of the conduction velocities, they come as omega r1 is to omega r2 is to omega r3. And finally, the result which I get is v1 is to v2 is to v3 is equals to r1 is to r2 is to r3. Which means to embed this conduction velocity ratio in my mechanical model, basically I need to. Make this circular cutouts with a radius ratio of two is to three is to five, and that is what I did. My smallest radius was four centimeter, the medium radius was six centimeter, the largest radius was ten centimeter, and now when I rotate these systems with same angular velocity, the impulses travel with the same conduction velocity ratio, and this is how I achieved my objective. Now I would like to put forward a question regarding the electrical conduction pathway of heart, right? Now the impulse represents the current, right? If I assume these bundles to be the current carrying wires, then what you would see is when you proceed from A V node towards the Purkinje fibers, the wires are basically open-ended at the Purkinje fibers. So the question arises that how is current flowing in an open circuit, right? So I would like to present the answer. The answer is basically this is a misconception. The bundles do not represent the current carrying wire. If you draw the electrical equivalent circuit. of uh, the electrical conduction pathway or of any conducting cell right so the circuit is something like this this is this pipe generator which is responsible for action potential generation and it is represented by sodium and potassium voltage gated channels we have a capacitor in the circuit how a capacitor uh, is coming in the circuit basically what happens the current loop is not being formed across the bundle the current loop is being formed across the plasma membrane between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid right so the circuit is not actually being formed throughout the bundle the circuit is being formed across the plasma membrane that's why this is a misconception that's why it is a misconception to assume this bundle as a current carrying wire right so how is this uh, capacitor coming in the scene basically we have icf as a conducting fluid it has ions in it so it is a conductor tcf is a, uh, similarly having some ions and it is a conductor right and two conductors connected by an insulator layer which is the plasma membrane right this represents a capacitor this is the basic construction of capacitor so this is how capacitor comes in the circuit this represents the leaky channels and this is the injecting current right the injecting current is basically impulse which you are injecting in the circuit so here i would like to end my presentation thanks for lending me your ears thank you guys last presentation for the day is by khart shekar from shri balaji college of dental sciences
and the chest cavity expands. During expiration, the diaphragm becomes dome shaped and the chest cavity becomes smaller. According to Boyle's law, the pressure and volume are inversely related. So, during inspiration, the diaphragm flattens and the volume of the thoracic cavity increases and there is a decrease in the pressure. So, the air from the external environment enters into the lungs. During expiration, the diaphragm becomes dome shaped and there is a decrease in the volume of thoracic cavity and the pressure increases. So, the air in the lungs is expired out into the external environment. We are going to see the materials used in this model. First, the plastic bottle which indicates the thoracic cavity and the straw which indicates trachea and bronchi. Two yellow balloons indicates the lung and the green balloon at the bottom indicates the diaphragm. Working of the model. When the diaphragm is uh, flattened, it is in inspiratory stage and the lungs are inflated. When the diaphragm is dome shaped, it is under expiration and the lungs are deflated. Dome shape, flatter. With this, we come to end of our model making session and I would like to thank all the participants and judges for making this model making session worthwhile and contributing to this physics and physiology to a meaningful extent. Now I hand it over to Dr. Kari. Thank you Dr. Himanshi for taking us through that event. Now I would like to call Now I would like to call our esteemed judges to share their comments. First, I would request Dr. Deep KK Deepak sir, HOD Physiology, AIMS New Delhi to share his feedback. Okay. Uh, sir, thank you uh, Dr. Kavi and thank you organizers uh, both Dr. Anita and Madhulika. Uh, it's been wonderful to uh, go through 13 uh, presentations, uh, all practical ones, and I am overwhelmed with the quantum of uh, work, the technical work they have displayed. And I'm very happy uh, to display the, the mechanical and physical aspect of uh, principles involved in uh, physiological functioning. And it's truly commendable. And really, it became very difficult when, when I looked at I shortlisted five at least or to go or five or six uh, uh, according to my opinion but uh, it is really very difficult because most of them uh, are coming through so uh, i think they all uh, deserve a word of applaud i think we can we can clap for all, all of them if they are listening we should do that so i think uh, that's what uh, uh, they all deserve they came from here so uh, i would encourage each one of them and at least what can be done uh, at the lower end, which I can suggest uh, uh, them, is that uh, they should go ahead with their enthusiasm. At least they can make uh, these presentation as the OSPI in their practical classes right now. And can start collecting and showing the display and then getting a feedback. Each one of them can make one OSPI station or two OSPI stations. I saw, I can imagine, auspicious session can be knowledge performance or they can demonstrate something and then they can ask the questions so it becomes a kind of a question and practical based auspice which they can do second thing they should explore themselves now we're going to give award and award that part will happen but they can explore further potential what is existing in the world literature old models and see where the model stands some of them extend tall and when they stand tall, they can expert do two things. They see is it got a patenting potential or not. May not, maybe. Even if not, they can think of a publishing this model. They try their luck, send to a journal which is uh, addressing both physics and physical issues, 
some of them really great the, the, the theoretical construct is coming to it some of them are actually shown a theoretical concept to mechanical type display and other systems so one thing they can do uh, is try to work out is it a, is it a model which is can be marketed for teaching purpose for physiology or can be marketed for doing research like uh, changing diameters of or, or changing intensities so there are the two things which can go for like uh, i would see some of them at least one or two of them have become entrepreneur in physiology take this model and try to see it if they can nurture further publish patent and become entrepreneur and start selling that the, the volume required for each equipment here at least 1000 in this country not a big deal when you sell 500 units uh, it's a, so that's one thing second if they are they are young guys i appreciate uh, their effort their students but then they should find a mentor somewhere they should see and how they can be hand holding done by some senior teachers locally or anywhere and they have taken that is it publishable they should ask is it publishable and get the answer for them sir so i would like to encourage uh, all of them all of them are wonderful each one i see some some way of hope and potential a positive thing they have come all the way and they have uh, displayed their skills more skills than knowledge and that's very appreciate appreciable they have held their flag of their uh, institute very high so i also acknowledge uh, uh, the parent department uh, uh, where they have come from and also the administration which they have permitted so that's commendable truly it's a, it's a niche uh, a, it's a kind of a, uh, environment which conducive which is available to them so they, we are thankful for the whole chain whole team uh, ecosystem where they come from so with that comment i uh, close and then uh, i request my co uh, uh, judge uh dr neelamani over to you thank you so much sir for your input yeah. and your encouragement now i request dr neelamani ma'am hod physiology university college of medical science to share her comments ma'am please yeah thank you so first of all i would like to congratulate lady harding for organizing this event this is really commendable and i also appreciate the uh, teams all the teams who have taken part in this and naturally their institute and their teachers must have helped them also for participating in this competition so this is really admirable and also their effort is very commendable because with the new thoughts and all the things they have come up and i agree with dr deepak that they should publish there and then they should go for the patent and all that like uh, earlier also in ijpp few articles were published uh, means the, whoever were, was making these uh, models and they were published and they were given the uh, due re- means appreciation so they should publish and then go for the patent and again ospi idea is also very good i also appreciate that so at last i would like to congratulate all the teams they have really done a good effort for participating in this competition thank you thank you ma- ma'am for your encouraging words now so i have one more idea Sure, I would encourage them to go to APPI and showcase. Chandi, go to Chandigarh, mm-hmm. and I try to arrange with Dr. Talking Anita Malhotra to provide them a space that we can arrange free of cost. Like I said, give a space where they can come and display. So even some of them, they come, they can come from uh, under the banner of Lady Harding, so they can play, and they can come and showcase. And it, I'm sure, it's going to be a good crowd pull up because what I am seeing is a public outreach. many people yes. will come and see these models and suddenly surprise the how things happens in the, how simply they can be shown a complex thing can be shown mm-hmm. so you can note down uh, dr madhulika if you need required some of them or depending on uh, if anybody wants to go like as a participants like you go and paper present paper you go and present your model and it's up to people to come and see so kind of uh, this thing 
which can also be done it can be given some space some platform presentation also depending on because in a 5 10 minutes time they can do it platform or actual display whatever they wish uh, they can do it if they can't do in the model they can do in theoretical uh, display like so that's another thing uh, i would like to encourage them so let's so we'll, get going and it's a good deal thank you so we'll try and take this forward we'll get in touch individually with all the participants and uh, also with the organizing team in chandigarh sir it, it's sure. a wonderful idea and i'm sure uh, that kind of a platform for our undergraduate students would be a boost. A boost. For, uh, would be a boost their for confidence. I'm thankful to all of them. Like, if they are boosting physiology, what we are thinking, they are actually doing it. Yes, sir. So, in fact, I was so surprised to see their innovation. And uh, yeah. so, I would also uh, really like to thank, uh, I guess, all the departments of these respective institutes took such an active interest. We could see that they are doing it right in their department, in the labs or in the lecture theatres. So, uh, I'm truly grateful to all the uh, faculty from these various institutes that they were able to encourage the students and uh, wholeheartedly supported them, sir. So it's truly commendable the amount of effort that the faculty also put in, sir. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, over to uh, Kari now. Uh, Anita, you want to add something? Okay. So Anita has a little problem in her throat today. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Yes, sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Kari, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, respected judges. Now, I would like to call Dr. Divya, third-year postgraduate student of our department, to present the vote of thanks. Ma'am, I feel very honored to propose the vote of thanks for this model-making competition of second All India Online Physiology Festival 2022. On behalf of organizing committee, First, I would like to thank our esteemed director of elections, Dr. Virendra Kumar, for giving us consistent support to conduct this festival. Next, I would like to thank our respective judges, Dr. KK Deepak and Dr. Neelamani ma'am, for sharing their experiences and giving their invaluable time in spite of their busy schedule. Now, I would like to thank our organizing chairperson, char Dr. Sunita Mondal, for uh, giving us this wonderful platform and also for encourage encouraging us to conduct this festival and make this possible. I wish to show my sincere gratitude to all the faculty members from all over India for accepting our invite and encouraging the students to participate in this festival. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the team members and audience for their active and enthusiastic participation. Thank you all. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Devya. So with this, we come to the end of the morning session, session of this festival. I would like to, I would thank, like to all thank, thank all the judges for their time and all the participants. I hope to see everyone in the afternoon session at 2 p.m. for the comic making competition. Please join us on our YouTube channel to encourage and vote for your favorite team. Thank you, everyone. So just a reminder, we will be closing the link for the audience vote Google form in uh, next 30 minutes. So after that, we will not be collecting any more responses. So thank you once again. And we say bye for the morning session. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Ma thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So you help us to work out the rooms, two rooms? So we have stopped the streaming.